Hey, good day, everyone. I'll just uh, I'll wait for uh, Christy to jump on. How are you all out there tonight? Hey, Nick. Hey, Ben. Hey, Jake. Hey, Dill. Hey, Jojo. Hey, Jojo. Okay, while I'm waiting, I'll do a quick shout out to my uh, sponsors. Uh, firstly, ASN. ASN have jumped on behind everything Beast Championship's done uh, from day one. So a massive shout out to Ben and the crew here at ASN Gladstone. Um, remember, uh, even though we're in isolation, that ASN Gladstone uh, still have... Uh, can you leave that there, bub? Mm, I yeah. need it. Yeah, no, you got the other phone, bubby. Okay. But that one um, can't go on Instagram and stuff. Yeah. I'll bring it in a sec, okay? Um, yeah, so Ben and his staff, they're still doing home deliveries. Uh, they're still doing uh, contactless uh, pickups. So you can uh, order what you what you want from ASN Gladi or ASN, all the ASN Australian Sports Nutrition Stores. And uh, they can leave it out the front for you. Ah, I've just seen Christy's jumped on. So I'll wait for her to send her a video and we'll get cracking with the interview. I guess that's a good background. Okay, good background. Hey, Dad. Okay, thanks, mate. I guess a good background. <laughs> thanks, Bobby. Because <laughs> I put it together, mate. Not the background from my last stream. Yeah, l later, Kato. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> uh, who we got? Lisa. Lisa's joined as well. Lisa, how are you, darling? I might do some troubleshooting in the background there. Ah, here we go. We're just waiting for it to connect. Ah, here we go. Hi. How you going, darling? Can you hear me okay? Um, I can. Can you hear me okay? Ah, you're a little bit soft. Are you got a, have you got an earpiece mic? Uh, I've just got like headphones. Okay, we'll see how that goes. Them out? Yeah, uh, I'll see if yeah, all I'll, the listeners there can, can hear you. Is that better? Go again. Is that better or worse? Yeah, I can hear you there. Fine, darling. I can hear you. Hopefully okay. everyone else out there can cool. hear you as well. But um, so firstly, Christy, can you introduce yourself to everyone uh, that's going to be on this video, especially for when I edit it? I know who you are. I'm a massive fan. <laughs> um, I am Christy K.O. Ops and I am an MMA fighter. Um, what else do you want me to say? <laughs> no, that's good, darling. Like, um... I know you're getting pretty modest. You won't. You can hear Nick. Thanks, darling. Yep, they can hear you fine, sweetheart. Yeah, Christy, so I've been a fan since day one. As you know, both you and Ryan uh, as a fighting couple. And um, so we've got a pretty interesting story. And I thought, you know, it's better to go with uh, females first and uh, do the gentlemanly thing. Plus, she's better looking. Uh, and as Joe yeah. just said, plus, you're much better looking. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> <I am>. So. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to start it off just we're going to backtrack a little bit and we're going to go back in time and I, I want to know yeah. what got you interested in fighting in the first place um, I so I originally started with Muay Thai yep um, what got me interested like I, I've done like boxing to fitness you know like because I I was like really unfit, um, like really, well, not really overweight, but I was overweight and I was like training with a trainer and um, we used to do like a lot of boxing for fitness, for fun. I always really enjoyed it. Um, I ended up going into personal training as a profession and at the gym I ended up working at, there was a girl who had joined a Muay Thai gym and she was saying she was like training to learn how to fight. And I was like, oh man, that'd be so cool, you know? And she was, yeah, yeah. She was, she was doing kicks and stuff and I just thought that's freaking awesome. So <laughs> um, I just started my own business. So like it was on the back burner for about a year, but um, it was something I wanted to do for about a year before I really decided to like go and try out some Muay Thai gyms and 
see which one fits for me and just go for it. Yeah, no, that's awesome, darling. And your first MMA fight? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, um, oh. yeah, when, when your first MMA fight for you? Like, I, I've, I've followed, but friend of us, I'm going to get to where you are with, with one in a second, but your first MMA fight. Yeah. So my first MMA fight was, like, I think just just over two years ago. Yep. Um, and I'd only been training in MMA and jiu-jitsu for like, I don't know, five months maybe prior to that. Um, so I, I literally never thought I would step in to a ring again, let alone a cage and do MMA because <laughs> um, I'd been – I'd been sick for about a year and I had to take a year off of training. Yep. So to like get back in there was huge. And that was all down to like the belief that Ryan had in me. Yep. Um, and how he worked with me to, to get me ready to step into the cage. Yeah. I, I, I got to say like Ryan, Ryan is a, a very, very good coach. Uh, you can see that in all of his students, and you can see that in his approach to fighting himself. You know, so I think that that was yeah. that was a beautiful match for you to to not only start as you know coach and student, but you know I want to get later on. So I've I've got all my questions written down to jog me, but we'll get to the proposal later as well because that's an awesome story okay. to tell. Now, for anyone that hadn't seen you <laughs> wrestle cool. prior uh, to you being on the One Warrior series, I I, I took um. <laughs> Kyron down obviously like we flew Kyron down for the triads in Sydney for the one warrior series and I mean like we got to meet Rich you know like that was awesome just meeting Rich Franklin in itself but you were you uh, were partnered with the boys and from a coach yeah. sitting on the sideline watching down like you smashed him did that sort of oh, give you like you. did that give you a boost of confidence going there knowing that out of like only what two females in the whole thing you, you got partnered with like some beast of, of some boys as your training partners and they didn't take it easy on you because they were there they were there on show as well. So they tried to give you um, a real good run for your money and you got the better of nearly all of them. <laughs> That's not quite how I remember it. <laughs> I, I do watching on the side. Like I don't think you realise. I said to yes. Ryan straight after it. I said to Ryan, she has no idea how good she just did. Oh, that's so cool. I, you know what? Um, I still don't. <laughs> I still yeah. don't have any idea. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, yeah. as, you, as you know, you made, a, you made a massive impression on them. And can you now yeah. tell everyone how you've gone and how you've progressed through One Warrior Series? Yeah, so I got accepted and um, that was crazy because I just thought, I was like, man, and I was with all these boys and... I did so terrible and like they were really testing me on my weakest area. <laughs> um, so even getting in was just such a shock. Um, and then I so I've fought twice for them in Singapore um, and I've won both um, of my fights by TKO or the second one KO but it's still, yeah, still I, recorded as TKO. <laughs> Now, I spoke to Ryan um, literally uh, before you had the fight. Obviously, you know, uh, when we had uh, the Gamma and all the worlds because uh, Ryan was my room buddy. Now, and we were talking about yeah. your fight strategy, where your strengths and your weaknesses were. And, yeah. like, we thought she was never going to test you in, in your strengths and weaknesses. And, like, um, you did extremely well on that fight. And I think the only people you probably didn't surprise was myself and Ryan because we knew yeah. your striking background, you know, like – so how did that feel getting yeah. that win under your belt the way you did it? Oh. Um, that? Oh. that means we've got to get to we've got to get to some questions in a second. Okay. And you've only got, uh, um, we'll finish up that question and then we'll go to okay. our quick sixty. So just this last this last fight, you mean? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, oh, I've forgotten the question. What was it? But how did it feel? To do that yeah the way you finished though that was dominant oh, man that was um for me like i just 
I've always been told like, wow, you've got really powerful hands and um, you've got knockout power and you can knock girls out. And it's one thing being like, oh, okay, thanks everyone. And, and I know I've got strong hands, but to actually do that, <laughs> is, uh, that, was, that was really cool because I just, I didn't know if I could, you know. Yeah, and so she that, was a know, tough opponent. <laughs> Girls are tough. Yeah. Like, I feel like I've been in a lot of fights and I'm like, man, I'm hitting these girls with everything I've got. Like, why am I going down already, <laughs> you know? So, um, so to actually pull that off was, was real, it was like a real confidence um, boost for me to know that I can do it. Yeah, no, that was, and congratulations on that, darling. You did really well. Now, what happened Thank after you. that? Uh-huh. So after that was like, it's hard to remember, really, because <laughs> it was so exciting. Um, and then, obviously, like, we went out and, like, I got unwrapped and everything and people are messaging me and on Instagram, you know, like, there's just this whole buzz. And, yeah, that was, I was one of them because um, I stayed up to watch it live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. But then we went out and watched the rest of the show and, like, it was just a a mix of emotions, like um, my now team mate, Marine fought and she had a like a, a loss, but it was like an unfortunate kind of stoppage. Yeah. So like I was comforting her and I was feeling like a little bit, you know, excited for me, but sad for her. And then at the end of the show, they get everyone into the ring to like give out bonuses or maybe they're giving out a contract and you know they just do like thanks everyone it was a really good night um yeah so you got a bonus all right i got a bonus well i got (laughs) i actually got a bonus we Um, all got a bonus that time yeah it was bizarre because um they actually gave a guy a contract so i was like no well that's it you know the contracts are in like there's no bonuses hang on um, and then they're like, oh, we've got one more bonus to give out. Um, and, you know, whatever Rich said, like, that's um, for you, Christy. And, like, I went up and shook his and Jonathan's hand and I went to walk away. And he was like, um, wait, come back. And I was like, oh, my God, am I getting a contract? Like, <laughs> that's not really what went through my head. Yeah. I was like, holy shit, this is crazy. And then um, he passed the mic over to Ryan. He was like, over to you, buddy. And then, like, I saw him coming into the ring and I I knew what was happening. (laughs) Yeah. Like, it took me, like, three or four weeks to process the whole range of emotions. And he he said after, like, it all happened and obviously, like, he proposed and I said yes. And we went back to the hotel. He's like, do you like what I said to you and I was like you know what I don't even know what you said to me (laughs) and all honesty like it's like um it's it's a very unique way yeah a very unique way and I think for a fighting couple like probably the best the best thing like I I I didn't even know he was doing I mean he must have kept it quiet to everyone but when I saw it, I was like, Very cool. that was an awesome way to cap that night off, you know. So, and congratulations yeah. to you two. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly you. bring up some questions here. I've, I've typed out yep. something. So in my video series, I'm going to, I've added in like some different things. I'm going to add in fighters and their tattoos. I'm trying to keep topics different so that I can cool. go in and do different things. So, but the one I'm doing tonight is you get to rattle this one off first. Okay, and now I'm going to put, you've got 60 seconds, 60 seconds to answer these questions, okay? So that that, that should be pretty quick. They're they're not trick questions or anything. It's just something to keep it fun for for everyone when we edit. Okay. Is this like a quiz? What's the weirdest job you've ever done? Oh, um, once I was a beautician, so I waxed vaginas. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Some people would say that's the coolest job. Uh, what's the uh, coolest trend that you see today? Coolest trend? Yep. Uh, you know what? I've just joined TikTok and that's pretty cool. Okay, I, I, I agree on that one. Uh, what would you tell yourself 
if you could look back at yourself at 13 years age? Oh, um, just believe in yourself. You're beautiful. Don't stress about things. Yeah, <laughs> good fun. advice. Um, how do you define success? Um, I define success by how I feel. Yep, okay. Uh, yeah. that's, that's a good answer. Okay, um, another. if you had to go uh, back in time or present, who's one person uh, you would like to meet and sit down and have a coffee with? I don't know. <laughs> I've got yeah. no idea. You'll probably think about it later and be like, <laughs> no idea. actually, who would I sit down and have a coffee with? Mine, mine personally would be no Bruce idea. Lee. Mine would be Bruce, Bruce oh, Lee. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would love to sit down and pick his cool. brains. But... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> now cool. I'm going to move on and I'm going to ask some other questions because your proposal on that was some that I had written down, Don. So just give me one second. I'll just keep firing up the computer yeah. in the background. Now, these are, again, questions, but there's no 60-second time limit. Okay, um, cool. That was hard because I, I talk a lot. <laughs> sorry? I said that was really hard under that pressure because I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for someone to can interview me like to give someone a one answer like I waffle on for ages which is why I thought you know what it's going to be perfect to talk to fighters because if I can help get people's stories out there especially in isolation like let's give them something to look forward to like that might be hey, what you don't realize Christy is that I've got females that train at Beast that when I put this up they're going to look at that and be like I'm, I'm literally looking at my coach's friend who has gone through and fighting and is making it, you know, like it's a really good message to put out there, lovey, which is yeah. the whole reason I'm trying to do this. Um, yeah, but cool. these ones, uh, we've, we've covered off on the first ones, but what's your favorite strike? Oh, just like anything from my left side. Smacking them in the face. Punch, kick. <laughs> favorite Something submission. Cool, like, you know, when, Oh, a submission, everything, everything's cool. But like, I think like when you can set something up really well, you know, yeah, catch yeah. someone. Yeah. yeah. So you're like a chain flow submission or a technique that you know that I'm like, I'm on mount. I've half got this arm. If I spin to this arm bar and I pull the arm bar off, are you meaning like completing it like that? Yeah. Yeah. Or even with striking, you know, like maybe I'm throwing my hands to set up something in the legs or maybe I'm like, attacking your legs or your body and then setting up a kick up high, you know? Yeah, yeah. Things. Caden, I can't, mate. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, my son's in the background yelling at me to come and play Fortnite. I will later, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> okay. Um, I love you too, bub. Uh, oh, so cute. <laughs> who is your biggest inspiration in life? You. <laughs> That's him in the background. So cute. <laughs> Uh, Thanks, Bubby. I, I I really draw inspiration from like the everyday person, you know, people that are overcoming adversity, um, people that are having a hard time and like work on themselves to get through that, whether it be with like physical injuries or disabilities or yeah, people been through bad relationships and managed to come out the other side and. I'm, yeah, I'm the same I, as you. Just, I'm the same as you are, are thinking like that. Like that's they're my sort of inspirations as well. You know, like uh, I guess like I call it like in the army. You know, the unsung heroes. You know, like yeah. the people, the battlers that no one else gets to know about, but you've seen them. You know, like and you draw super strength from that. Yeah. Yeah. And just, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a, that's awesome. Like, um, well, ah, okay. This one's about your move to Bali MMA. Uh, I wanted to know what's the biggest. The biggest change to your training since leaving, uh, you know, Australia and moving to Bali MMA. What would you classify as the biggest thing? Um, well, obviously, because we're not working full time. Yep. And trying to train, we're training a lot more. Yep. So we've got um, and a bit more specific classes. You know, back then we only had two, two and a half to squeeze, try and squeeze everything in and we structured it the best we can but now you know we can get up train in the morning, do striking at lunchtime we come back, we can do wrestling, at night we've got jiu-jitsu, you know, like so 
we've got more time to work on just broadening your horizons and your skills. Yeah, you know? that's you've got the time and, and to again, people that again that they're working that their their aspirations are are literally. Oh, yeah. You know, you're surrounded by people on the same mission as you, I guess. I love you too, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's a good thing too, you know, because, like, I mean, back home we had an awesome team and they pushed us hard, but, you know, like, they're still doing their life, whereas I guess for me and Ryan it was like we wanted to make fighting, we wanted to give fighting everything that we had, yeah. you know, for yeah. the time that we had. And everyone over here. Yep. Is doing the same thing, so you know, like there's a different like expectation level, and there's people are yeah people are in there to make it their careers, you know. So yeah, I, I, so it's kind of fun. When when Ryan told me about it, I was like, I was thinking at the time like this is going to be the absolute best move for you guys um, because I, I I know from him, like he said, he was telling me about how his t his training time for himself was at an all time low because. He loves his students. Yeah. He loves training everyone, and he tries to give them their time first. So, like for him, I was super excited for both years. Is not just because of you being in one warrior series as well. Is you've given yourself, you've lined up the best crack at this as you possibly can. Moved to a, a very tough gym with good coaches, other good fighters. So, you know, well done to you both for doing that, darling. Hey, I'm just gonna. Yeah. Kato, we, can we you be a little bit quieter in the background, please, mate? Okay. Yes, please, buddy. I'm Really okay, yeah. Keep one headphone off for me while you Harrison play. Headset and up and don't talk. Yeah, okay, mate. Look, I'll catch up with you later, buddy. Okay. Love you. <laughs> I love you too. Um, ah, okay. Ah, this this is one I wrote down today. Now, in time or present, if you could fight one person and one person only, who would be your dream fight matchup? Khabib. Khabib? <laughs> yeah, Khabib. Kato, not you. This is Christy, please, mate. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if you could have one um, fighter, past, present, who would that fighter be? I guess for me, like, I, I, want, I want to be the best I can. Yep. So obviously not now, but you know I want to I want to have an opportunity and put myself into a position and get myself to a level where I'm up there fighting fighting for belts, fighting for fighting the top of the girls at their games. So you're gonna do it, you know. <laughs> you're gonna you. do it. So you... I guess in one championship, that's Angela Lee. Yeah, yeah, and again, that's so. <laughs> uh, there you go. There's your pinnacle right there. And I honestly believe yeah. you're going to do it. Like, you're young Thank enough, you. you've got the drive, you've got the technique, like, you've got the skill, and more, most importantly, you know, you've got the heart, you know, like, and, and that's what this game requires is, you know, heart, you know, it requires a massive amount Absolutely. of heart. And for people that haven't, I'm, I'm getting to this question, but I'll sort of lead into it. For people that haven't seen the life yeah. of a fighter, they don't understand the heart that goes into it, like, the discipline to get to that gym you know, most people go, oh, I'm feeling a bit tired today. I don't want to go to work. I don't want to go. I'm going to call in and make a sick day and stuff. But you know, as a fighter, if you call in sick on yourself, if your opponent's at that gym training and he's done six hours or she's done six hours that day, that's six hours in the same period of time for a fight camp that you haven't trained, you know? So um, I'm leading in to go, what is a typical? So I know we're in isolation. So let's go pre-isolation or after isolation. What would a typical week from Monday to Sunday be for Christy Ops? Um, so Monday morning we were um, sparring and that was like an hour and a half session. Yep. Um, in the afternoon we do strength and conditioning. Um, if you're feeling okay, there was always like jujitsu or boxing, like skills classes that you could go do in the afternoon. Um, it changed a little bit depending on whether you're in camp or out of camp, but um, be like striking class yep. and drills in the morning. Um, and this was kind of Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We'll do like an 
hour and a half, sometimes two hour wrestling sessions, very yep. tough. <laughs> um, and then pads at night work at night with the coaches, like working on specific things um, for yourself and for your game plan. Yep. Uh, Wednesday we do MMA sparring, so that changed rather than the wrestling. Um, and then Friday would be like a Monday, so it would be sparring again. Yep. Um, and then strength and conditioning, and then there's extra stuff if, if you can and if you want to. And then Saturday um, we'd do 8 a.m. like boxing drills or striking drills or, or whatever um, whatever the coaches wanted us to do, really. Sometimes that's very technical sessions. Sometimes it's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then... We'll do uh, no day for like an hour and a half after that. And then Saturday afternoon and Sunday, you can recover. Or some of the guys are crazy. They can like run on Sundays and all this stuff. My body's like, oh, no, you need a rest day. But, um, <laughs> yeah. No, that's so awesome. It's, um, it's like like a minimum three hours training a day. Yeah. A minimum. Yeah. That's so good. Like, I'm, I'm trying to build that pathway here. Like, we're obviously, we live in a regional town, but um, with Beast Martial Arts, you know, we're trying to obviously create that there for them. Like, um, the fight camps that they're doing out at, at there now, like, it's just it's just getting better. I've got uh, the other MMA coach, Joel. Uh, we've, we've put our heads together and we've developed, like, a very, very intensive 12-week program. So we're, like, a, a four-week pre-camp going into a 12-week fight camp so that people understand that the four-week pre-camp especially for debut fighters and stuff, is how much work we're going to expect of them in the four-week pre-camps. And then they can go, you know what, this fight game isn't really for me. <laughs> you know, because basically it's like, it's, it's a mini boot camp to go, how bad do you want this? Because the next 12 weeks are going to be some of the yeah. hardest three months of your life. Um, yeah. Yeah, people people want to do it and, until they, um, they realize what it takes. And yeah, and that was yeah. what I was coming back to, that heart. You need to worry your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And feeling like shit and knowing I've just got to get up and do it anyway. And in all honesty, yeah, I, some I, of my best I, training yeah. sessions have been the days I told myself I don't want to train, but I'm going to do it anyway for that discipline. I'm disciplined. Yeah. And at the end yeah. of that training, I'm like, I've done PRs and everything else because I forced myself to go and mentally something just happens. You know, like I just, I yeah. end up fighting with myself. Yeah, definitely. And and you know you put the work in, like I was going to say, even for people starting, you know. Well, I remember when um, I started Muay Thai and I got accepted into the fighters class and I, I literally, um, my training partners were like um, Kevin Reese, who's like a multi champion, and little Kim Townsend and um, Alicia Pistano who have been yep. fighting for years. And I just used to get smashed, you know, I didn't know anything. And I would literally sit in the car and cry the whole way home every <laughs> night. And I and I went there again the next day, you know, and yeah. I got beaten up. And and even with the boys, you know, that's like all the boys I've trained with, they could tell you many times where they've been sparring, inspiring, I'm like bawling my eyes out. And I'm like, you keep hitting me, it's fine, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and um, like that's for jujitsu. For anyone watching that has never tried jujitsu, like that's it. You turn up, and for the first six months, it does, you're like, how can he beat me? I, I weigh 104 kilos, yeah. and he weighs 50, and my arm muscle is bigger than I his leg, but he's choking me out. Like, how, how can, yeah, yeah. Chaps, many, many big guys out, and they're like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was referring to about the Rich uh, Rich Funkins one warrior tryouts here. Yeah. Is I think like your technique was so on on point that they were probably expecting like, oh, we'll just get in there. I've got to do this next drill. And they're like, oh my god, this this female's like outscoring me and out beating me with this technique. You know, like and uh, and like I was talking to Karen flying home and that, and he was like, he was super surprised. He was like, I think it was harder um, training with with Christy than it was for the boys. Because with the boys, you sort of like you met and you're two balls sort of hitting, whereas like you were just moving around them, you know, like and um, oh, and, and Caitlin was the same, you know, like you you were using technique to get around them in, in ways that they probably weren't used to with that speed. So that was his feedback. Yeah, I've got the cat cool. meowing at me That's and meowing good. at me to feed him. We've just fed him, 
This this cat at the moment is so fat that I've refused to feed him. <laughs> he normally has a, a belly hanging down to the floor at the moment in isolation. <laughs> hey, little Bubba. You can have your phone now, darling. I'll finish with the timer, baby. Thanks, Bub. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to... How many people driving your thing? Oh, there's people coming in and out all night, baby. There are people. I'm not... Okay, though, you've got like... Six you've, people. You've got stew all over your face, mate. Go wash your face, bub. You've got stew all over it. Okay. Uh, um, this one here, my, my, my last question that I've got uh, in my list of questions. Are good now? Yeah. Kato, can I please talk, mate? Come on, mate. Thanks, bub. I asked him before I started, I said, Kato, I can talk to you straight after, mate, but please don't come and talk to me every minute. <laughs> so I'm happy that it's every couple of minutes at this stage. Yeah, um, good. The, the last one is this fight related, training related, like fight camp related, but can you share with us your funniest fight related story? We've all got these funny things that happen at, at training or, you know, getting ready for a fight. Some You, you witness this strange warm-up routine from someone. What's your funniest uh, moment that you've seen? That I've seen? Oh, my God, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm pulling blanks here, but um, the only thing that's really coming to my mind is, is training and there's, People that want to come and spar with the fighters because they are at that level. And, um, yeah, I've seen heaps of people wanting to kind of – should be in a beginner class and jump up to an advanced class and, um, yeah, some cra crazy technique gets thrown. And, oh, the YouTube specialist? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes. The people that are like, oh yeah, I can, I can knock out Mike Tyson, and you're like, what is this <laughs> talking about? You know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have, I have witnessed a lot of that, and I don't know if it's funny, but um, crazy. And I have been on the end of having to give some punishment to people that won't listen as well. So yeah. Um, I'm sure I've got way funnier moments, but like, I'm not, I'm not thinking of anything at the moment. I, I probably need to send a pre-list of questions to people. Would it help if I, if I had to send them to you today? If I sent you the questions earlier in the day so you could go like, ah, oh, right, would that help you uh, from an interview point? Uh, maybe, but I think it's kind of nice to like, be put on the spot, you know? Yeah, that was what I wanted to do is like is I didn't want to have like a premeditated Some speech. More real. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. I'll keep I'll keep it hidden for them. Um what's my little chicken yeah. nugget saying? I just Something? like can't think of anything funny. <laughs> um yeah. Uh, maybe lots of Lots of people on the mats and like, you know, they'll fart or something when they throw a kick <laughs> or you know, like or something. Yeah. It's always funny. Farts are funny. Doesn't matter how old you are. Yeah, I've uh I've yeah, the old stories of the people that have come straight from work and you practice some triangles and all you can smell is manky butthole and stuff. And you know what? It's even worse as a coach because that people on the mat don't tell the person. They'll go, hey, coach, can I have a word? you will be like, yeah, what's up, mate? And they'll be like, can you tell Joe Bloggs that he needs to have a shower before he comes because we're practicing triangles and all I can smell is manky butthole. And I'm like... Yeah. There's only one way to say that. You know, it was like, hey, come, hey, dude, you got to wash your ass, man. Like, I'll bet no one's going to train with you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. That's on you. Yeah, and there's no really, you can't really model your way around that sort of topic, you know, like. Um, no. Yeah. When I started jiu-jitsu, funny, I don't know if it's funny, but um, I was drilling with this guy and. So he was like on top and we were just talking Kayden, about the technique. Kaden, please stop it. And Sorry, it, darling. Sorry. It's, it's all right. A sweat like dropped off his nose right into my mouth. <laughs> it was so gross. Yep. And we both knew it, but we were like, and it was so awkward, but we we're like, we're just going to pretend that didn't happen, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, <laughs> yeah. I've been in the same position. 
there was one guy I used to roll with all the time and he had the hairiest chest. And whenever you'd practice like north-south chokes, his gi was like, it wasn't a very good fitting gi. And all you would get all over your face was the first layer of sweat from the hair and then the deep layer of sweat while he practiced his north-south choke, you know, and it's just like, it's okay for me as a bloke, but I know that females yeah. in the class would never, ever drill with him. And that was the reason. And our, our, our professor at the time didn't actually want to tell him. Like, he goes, it's a personal choice. But I'm like, yeah, but you've also got like six females on the mat. Maybe just go, hey, mate, like, put a rash guard underneath, you know, like, because you're covering people's face in hairy chest sweat and the females don't like it. So, no, but now, yeah, Christy, but you can get used to it, I guess. Sorry, you kind of just get used to it. Yeah, yeah, that's. I think there's two. There's two sort of people, like um, male and female, that they get used to it, and they have this this preconcessor in their head, the, the this preconceived idea that oh, jujitsu is so sexual because you're all wrestling and all this stuff, and then I'm like, seriously. I can only tell you from experience, it's the least sexual thing you'll ever do. You're getting choked, you're getting armbarred, you're defending yourself. Looking from the sideline, you've seen all the jokes, but when you do it, you'll be like, oh my God, that was the last thing. And they all do it, and they're like, oh my God, you were so right, Jace. Like, that position there, I never would have thought of. But looking at it, I was like, I, my husband will never let me do jujitsu. Like, that guy's literally sitting on my chest, you know, and spinning on my head. <laughs> so far from what actual yeah. jujitsu is, and I think maybe yeah. two out of every ten females, one out of every five, will go through that period and stick with it. Unfortunately, a lot of husbands, over from my experience, have been like, "No, nah, no, nah, you're not doing that. That mm -hmm. that bloke's got a, his gi comes open with his six pack and his muscles. You're not wrestling with that dude tonight. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so not like that at all, but. A serious question for you. I okay. obviously, um, I, I love to be a role model for kids. I love to have other people be role models for kids. Like they're the next generation and what we love doing now, if we can create pathways for them to be doing it earlier uh, on bigger stages and everything else, that's why I created the, um, the, the Young Lions, the Junior Fight Series. But what would you say, not, not just to females, but to young boys as well, but specifically, to the young females because you've probably seen it for every for every 10 kid, male boys that are training male boys bloody male boys <laughs> don't get a female boy or oh, maybe we do you, you know <laughs> uh, we might yeah. yes there might be one female that's in the class with them what would you say to the young girl that's starting out in MMA now to, so to the young girl or to yeah. the young people? Yeah. So I've put you and the young girl and I'm like, you've got you've got to pass on some knowledge to her in 60 seconds. What would you say to this young girl to make her believe in herself? Uh, to say you're powerful, you can do anything that you want in the world, no matter what that is. Just follow your heart and stick with it and, um, yeah, just believe in yourself. Yeah. I think uh, you, you really summed it up with your powerful belief in yourself um, is they don't believe in themselves enough. And uh, I'm the sort of coach that uh, I have very strict limits and everything else. But if I see someone doing something awesome, I'll stop the whole class. And I'll be like, everyone, yeah. you know, like Sophie just did her first spinning arm bar. She's been practicing it for six months and she just pulled it off. Everyone stop. Everyone give Sophie a clap. You know what I mean? And the, the look on their face was like, and I'm like, you just achieved something. You just, if you're a gamer, you've just unlocked the next level. You know, like that's how good it yeah. should feel. You know, and, um, and I love that about it. But as a male, I can say that to females all the time. Like the, the more female fighters we get out there for them to listen to and go, okay, I hear it from my coach. I hear it from my other male coach. My other coach is a male jiu-jitsu coach as well. But when they hear it from a female, it just, it hits them on a whole different level. Um, and yeah. obviously, we all know who and Michelle Nicolini is. So, do I know Michelle Nicolini? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, I asked her yes. 
one of my students, same Sophie. Sophie loved Michelle Nicolini. Yeah. And Sophie was going through a little bit of a rough time. Like she was at the stage where she'd been doing jujitsu longer than people, but other people were starting to beat her. And it, it wasn't that she wasn't doing anything wrong herself. It's just that the other people were getting this, this like fast twitch fire going. You know, they wanted to compete. They wanted to beat her because she was the higher belt. And she was happy just doing her jujitsu. And it was starting to really upset yeah. her. So I asked Michelle Nicolini if she would actually message yeah. Sophie. And she, so Michelle messaged me so I could screenshot it and give it to Sophie. But she also went public on my post and wrote a message to Sophie on there. And it changed Sophie so much. Just one female role model. Yeah, cool. And it was so cool, you know. I think the other thing for kids too, you know, like there's a lot of pressure to whether directly coming for, from parents or just like subconsciously like to be a certain way or to do a certain sport or dress a certain way or whatever. But um, I think the other thing is just be yourself and if you love it, yes, you can do it. Like you don't have to. And if you want to beat boys up on the mat and wear pretty dresses, you're allowed to do that too. You know, like you don't have to be one or the other. Yeah. No. Um, exactly. Like for, for them, that belief and a parent can make or break their child. Um, I've, I've seen it. You may have seen it, Christy. Like if the kid wants to impress the parent and they look over their parent and their parents just like, it's a waste of time bringing you here. You haven't won a match. That that boy that is 10 kilos lighter than you got out of your choke. You know, what's a waste of time? And they'll talk to me. The parents will go like, is it really a waste of time? And I'm like, what's the rush? What's the rush? Yeah. Let them enjoy it. Because one day. If they love it. Yeah. I'm like, if you don't have to chuck them in the car, kicking and screaming, and they've actively got their gi and their, their gi bag at school ready to go straight from school, what more could you ask for from a kid? Honestly. Like, um, I think that goes back to the like, definition of success, you know, like is success how many gold medals you've got or is it success, success how like, would you feel about yourself because you're doing what you love? Yes, mm -hmm. yep. And yeah, and I think when, when I get a chance, I say to the, to the parents, like, I need to program your mind, not the kids. The kids are kids. Yeah. Right? We don't need to program them. The kids are monkeys. They're taught to absorb what, what they see around them. So if if everything they see is like, oh, I'm not doing good enough, I, must, I mustn't be doing good enough. If you want them to be a world champion, that's your aspirations. But when you're on the side of the mm. mat and you're looking at your little girl, give her a thumbs up. Give her a smile and then she'll be like, you know what, I'm enjoying this. My dad's loving seeing me do this and they will get better naturally. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think like um, more female athletes like yourself maybe putting a few posts going, you know what, girls, you are more powerful than you could believe. You know, like stick to it, stick to your training. Don't worry about the boys. You know, you are more than capable yourself. That That I would share that, you know, and ask all my students to share that because it's a message that they really need to see. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'll wrap it up, darling, because I know I've had you there for a long time. Um, my son's mm -hmm. going a bit crazy in the background with Fortnite. I don't know if you can hear, Kato. I need to go play Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> Do you play Fortnite? No. Oh. I suck at gaming. Caden <laughs> lives on it. So I'm waiting to find, uh, I guess yeah. I'm going to find one of my fighter interviews, someone that I can go, here, Kato, send him a friend request, buddy. And go and play Fortnite, mate, and talk fighting while you do it. Because <laughs> he, there'll again, I'm he sure love. Sorry, I'm sure there'll be plenty of people. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I've seen there's a that. few gamers on there. I'm hoping some of the international fighters that I, I follow that talk about their game, and I'm hoping I can get one of them. So, but uh, is there anything cool. you'd like to say to everyone before we wrap it up? Ah, uh, just. Thank you for having me. Thank you for following me. If you're following me, um, yeah, just do what you love, guys. Follow your heart.
that's it. And um, uh, there's, there's a message. I'm going to make sure I get it right before I say it. Um, when you can't do what you love, do what you can. And everyone right now needs to remember that simple message is we all can't be doing what we want to be doing at the moment. But we are all capable of doing what we can with what we've got. Like I've set up my backyard yeah. so it's my own little home gym. You know, like every all my students are like, Chase, if I come around, can we have a one-on-one -on -one role? And I'm like, as much as I'd love that, no. Because everyone else out there isn't getting that. So it's, I don't want to create this little... Oh, you're special and I'm special. We're all in this together. Yeah. When they lift the yeah. isolation and they lift the sanctions, let's all get back to it together. But I'm not going to have a copper turn up on the door and give me a thirteen, thirty-four, you know, uh, dollar fine because I wanted to have a jujitsu role with my mate. Like, let's just do what everyone yeah. else is doing. When no one's more special, uh, Habib said that beautifully. And, you know, when he said, "What makes people think that I'm so special?" that I should have an individual private flight from Russia to America. You know, like, I'm a fighter. I'm not saving anyone's life. That sort of stuff should yeah. be kept for people saving people's lives. Like, I'm a fighter at the end of the day. Is the world that, that caught up on fighting in isolation that I need to somehow feel special? And what about me? You're asking me as a fighter to risk going through these things to going through and catching this so I can put on a fight show. Like, aren't we all in this together? And I thought that was probably the best thing, you know, a fighter could have come out and said. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, uh, and uh, I mean, when you said that, like, if you don't know what you love, because a lot of people out there don't. Yep. This isolation is the perfect time to figure that out. hundred so, percent. Like my post today was like in a rush to get back to what you were doing before this, look and see if the things that you thought were important are as important now. I think this has been a great reset for the world. Like I've connected with my kids and my wife in ways that we were missing out before, you know, so I'm, yeah. I'm literally running my two nights that I run at the club. The other coaches will run their classes and stuff and we all can connect and be much deeper and deeper relationships with our families and stuff, which is, so isolation has been brilliant for that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's a blessing. And you got your best ISO buddy over there anyway, you know, like, you know, you've got your yeah, fiance just, we, as your training we buddy. We stop training. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess everyone would love to have a partner who's also an athlete, you know what I mean? Like, so you and Ryan right now, you've got like, you've got the best recipe for success out there. You can train at the gym, you can come home and put some mats up and there's no 1.5 meter restriction for you guys. You know, like, so you and Ryan, yeah, big thumbs up to both of you. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on, Christy. Like, um, I'm hoping that you get a lot more a lot more fans from this. Um, I'll edit it. I'll put it up on YouTube. I'll share it on my page. I'll tag you. And um, if, if there's any sponsors or anything that you want me, uh, please uh, send me pictures of them and all that sort of stuff and I'll make sure I put them up in the video because I mean like um, there's a, I can tag you Bob of course I can mate Caden wants me to tag him Christy so I'll have to tag my son as well better tag him better tag him <laughs> but thank you for being phenomenal thank you for being an Aussie Thanks, athlete God. out there on the world stage doing what you're doing and motivating lots I'm not just talking about females but lots of males as well can literally look at you and go you know what there's someone from Australia that's making it through, done the One Warrior Series, won her fights and has moved her way. There's, there's been no handouts through this. It's all off your own accolades and your own hard work. So congratulations, Christy. And, you know, you've got all of Australia Thank behind you. you, darling. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, sweetheart. I'll talk to Ryan tomorrow. Yes. Thank It'll you, be his, darling. <laughs> Bye. See you, sweetheart. Bye. Thanks for watching, yeah. everybody. I'll edit this and get it up. It's been a really good night talking to Christy. Tomorrow I talk to Ryan. Thanks heaps, team. Until then, us.